This video is sponsored by Athletic Brewing Non-Alcoholic Beer. Order a six-pack online at the link below. สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. There are a few sauces in Thai cuisine that Thai people cannot live without. I've already shown you one, p r i k n a m p l a that is the all-purpose improver of all things. And I'm going to show you another sauce today that in my house gets made even more often than p r i k n a m p l a I am talking about nam jim j e o Nam jim j e o is a sauce that Thai people use for all of our meat dipping needs. Grilled meats, fried meats, boiled meats, you name it. If there's a meat that needs dipping, nam jim j e o is always the answer. I even know certain Thai people, I'm not going to say who, who would bring their own nam jim j e o to steak houses because once you go j e o you cannot go back. Today, I'm going to show you not just a recipe, but a basic formula for nam jim j e o and then show you how you can customize it to better pair the thing that you are dipping. So first, let's go through all of the components of nam jim j e o First, the salty component, which is always fish sauce. The acid, which is tamarind paste and/or lime juice. I like to use both, but some people use one. The tamarind, you can use the pre-made stuff or make it yourself. I do have a recipe for that. The sweet. Palm sugar or white sugar will work here. Fresh herbs. This is where you can play around a bit, but the basics are shallots, cilantro, and green onions. Mint or sawtooth coriander can also be used. The spicy. This always comes in the form of roasted chili powder or chili flakes. Store bought is totally fine, but I like to make my own by toasting dried chilies in a skillet until slightly charred, and then grinding it in a coffee grinder. You can also toast or bought chili flakes real quick as well. You can skip the toasting if you're in a rush, but it does add a nice smokiness to it. Finally, and the most important thing, toasted rice powder or k a o k u a This is non-negotiable. You simply need to toast some uncooked rice in a dry pan, and this is typically glutinous rice, but jasmine rice is just fine. It may get a bit smoky, so make sure you have good ventilation, and you just keep going until it's dark brown like this. Then you can grind it in a mortar and pestle, or use a coffee grinder if you like. And I like to keep it slightly grittier for texture, so don't powderize it completely. Now that we've got all of our components, here is my basic formula for my first gel, which is what I call the all-purpose gel. For this, I'm going to use two parts tamarind, one part lime juice, one part fish sauce. And one part finely chopped palm sugar, and you want to finely chop because we're not cooking this. So if they're in big pieces, it's going to have a hard time dissolving. So you want to give this a stir and take your time with it to make sure all most of the sugar is dissolved. If you've got a few stubborn bits that won't dissolve, usually by the time you need it, it will have dissolved by then. So just get it mostly there. Few last little bits. I'm not going to worry about that. And then in goes the toasted rice powder. Mm. This is the thing that instantly makes it good. The chili flakes, as much as you want, a little bit more. And then all of our fresh herbs. And give everything a mix. So I used tamarind as my main acid here because I want this to have a bit of a body, and tamarind is a thing that is thick, right? It's also got a softer acidity than lime, so this sauce is a little bit sweet, and it just goes great with just about everything. Here is our all-purpose d o u Let me show you how to use this. This is a dipping sauce. It is not a pouring sauce. It is not a gravy, and this is important because this is in. Hence, okay, we didn't dilute it with anything. It is, if you pour this on like gravy, it's gonna feel a bit much. So, a nice little dip, or if you're sharing, just a nice little dab with a tiny spoon. Mm. Oh, it's just perfect. The reason this goes with meat so well is mainly because of the acidity. It's bright. But it's also got the aroma of the toasted rice, a little bit spicy, and meat is generally like it's a richer food, right? And it cuts the fat of meat 
it just enhances the flavor of meat. It is just so delicious. Now I'm going to show you a couple of variations. As I said, this all-purpose chow is good for most meat, but sometimes if I'm eating really fatty things like crispy pork belly or meat that's been marinated to be quite sweet or thin, delicate pieces of meat such as for hot pot, I like to make a variation of chow that is lighter and brighter and less sweet to cut the grease and the sweetness and also to not overwhelm really small, delicate pieces of meat. So for that, we're going to keep all of the same components, but adjust our ratios. So for this, I'm going to use less tamarind, which is the thing that makes it thick, more lime juice, which is lighter and brighter, more fish sauce, and less sugar. And I'm also using white sugar to stick with the light theme. Give that a quick stir and this will dissolve much more effortlessly and you can already tell how much thinner it is. And then everything else is the same. Our toasted rice powder, chili flakes, and let's make this a little spicier, and the fresh herbs. And you can see already that it is much runnier and that's exactly what we're going for because I don't want this to cling so much onto a piece of meat when I dip into it. Let me demo, which is really my excuse to eat. So I've got some crispy pork belly and some thinly sliced pork belly again, hey, um, which is typical of what we use in hot pot. You just take this little piece here and you just do a dippy dip and then barely anything clings onto it, which is exactly what we want. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Thai food is all about balancing flavors, as you may have heard before. And this is exactly a great example of that. Rich, fatty, you've got bright, spicy, acidic, and the two together will allow you to eat more pork belly than you ever thought was possible, which may be rather dangerous. By the way, you may have heard the term nam dim before, maybe on online recipes or restaurant menus, and I want to clarify what that means. Nam dim in Thai means dipping sauce. Nam refers to liquid and dim is to dip. And it doesn't refer to any specific kind of dipping sauce, it's just saying dipping sauce. Now, Dao also means dipping sauce, but in the Northeastern Thai dialect. So technically, Nam Jim Dao means dipping sauce, dipping sauce. But what that means to Thai people is that this is the dipping sauce from the Northeast. The Northeast has many kinds of dipping sauce, but this is the one that the whole country fell in love with. And while we're on the subject of dipping sauce, dipping sauce, let me just get out a quick rant, okay? So I have seen many online recipes, English language recipes, for a Thai nam jim sauce. And I'm always like, that doesn't mean anything. Nam jim means dipping sauce. So this is a recipe for dipping sauce sauce. But even though I understand that nam jim teo also means dipping sauce sauce, to Thai people it's referring to a specific thing. But if you were to go to Thailand and then you say, can I have some nam jim sauce please? Nobody would know what you are talking about until they know what it is that you want to dim into it, okay? So if you're eating seafood, here's some nam jim seafood. If you're eating meat, here is some nam jim teo, etc, etc. So, this nam dim sauce thing doesn't mean anything specific. So just FYI for all recipe creators out there, no more nam dim sauce, please. Please specify what you're giving a recipe for. All right, I have one last version to share with you, which is my husband's favorite nam dim dao. But before that, let me tell you about another thing that goes really well with meat and Thai food, and that is Athletic Brewing Non-Alcoholic Beer, who is our sponsor today. When it comes to pairing Thai food with beverages, I have always preached that beer is your best option, not wine. But I've been trying to drink less alcohol myself, and so I've been trying various non-alcoholic beers on the market, but nothing quite hit the spot until I found Athletic Brewing. This was a game changer because it tastes great, it fully satisfies my craving, and it's such a relief to be able to drink as much as I want without having to worry about how I'm gonna feel the next day. 
this is the Upside Dawn, which is a refreshing golden that really quite reminds me of a Thai style beer. So for Asian or Thai food pairing, this would be my go-to. Um, but if you are a craft beer fan, you like a little bit bitterness, the Run Wild is an IPA style that is quite good. Or if you're calorie conscious, there is a light that's only 25 calories a can. So I am hooked, and if you're looking for an actually good non-alcoholic beer option, give Athletic Brewing a shot. You can order a six-pack online. Link is in the description below. All right, the last version of Nam Jin Tao is something that I came up with myself. This is not a traditional thing, but it is a mellower version of Nam Jin Tao. As I said, the basic Tao is very intense. You do not want to be pouring this on like gravy. But here in the West, we are often served large pieces of meat, such as a steak or a pork chop or like a big piece of chicken, that sometimes it's just more practical to pour sauce over it rather than having to dip. So I came up with an idea of, of a, a nam jim jiao that I can more generously spoon over a piece of steak without it being overpowering. All we have to do is take our basic jiao and dilute it dilute it with some juicy chopped tomatoes. And the tomatoes will mellow out all the flavors without making the sauce taste watery or unflavorful. And it really adds a nice freshness. And tomatoes themselves have a lot of natural umami. So this sauce is just overall still very delicious. You want to give it a minute to sit so that the juices will come out and the flavor mingling happens. Let me demonstrate with this steak right here. Now, this is still more intense than a gravy, just a fair warning, but where are all my utensils? Now, this is still more intense than a gravy, but you know, the chances of you overdoing this is gonna be much lower. Get some chunks of tomatoes in there. Mm. So good. Oh man, that was just so satisfying. This is the stuff that you bring to the steakhouse the next time you go, okay? Um, and I just want to credit Cooking with Nana, a great Lao cooking channel that gave me this idea because I saw on her channel a Lao dipping sauce called Chao Maklen, which is a dipping sauce made with a lot of tomatoes. And I thought, oh, tomatoes, that would make a great mellower for Nam Jim Chao. And indeed, it does. And that is it. The recipe, as always, will be on HotThaiKitchen.com. A special thanks to all of our Patreon members who help support the show. And if you want to know what that's all about, how you can get direct access to me in our Discord group, the link will be in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawadee